15 seconds. 10 seconds. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. In your face, all over the place. We're online 24 7, 24 7. You're listening to the hottest internet station from beautiful Saline in southeastern Michigan. Around the world at sunskymysteries.com. This is the 2009 Top 10 Webcam in the World winner. This is S E T V. Totalitarianism doesn't need armies. It only needs to control a couple of things. The media and the ability to dispense privilege to some and withhold it from others. And of course, a weak and divided people helps. There is only one holistic system of systems. One vast and immane, interwoven, interacting, multivariate, multinational dominion of dollars. Petrodollars, electrodollars, multidollars, Reichmarks, rims, rubles, pounds, and shekels. It is the international system of currency which determines the totality of life on this planet. Well, good evening, everybody. Welcome to a special Saturday night show. <clears throat> My name is Bill Zam, and if you're anything like me, well, I kind of feel sorry for you. It has been an excellent springtime day in the middle of March here in southeastern Michigan, believe it or not. The high temperature today was around 75 degrees. Still very nice outside. Perfect day for a barbecue and settling down and watching or listening, in this case, to a nice, pleasant spring training baseball game. Of course, the Detroit Tigers won 10 to 3. Even though it was a spring outing, it was still quite, quite uh, entertaining. Now, we have had a request from one of our previous guests, and I'm going to call it up here so that we can take a look at it. And I should have had it on the screen before now, but of course I did not. So I will um, spend a couple of minutes talking about a couple of other things. 
right now, if you live in the state of California, and I see that I have, nope, I have the correct, I have the correct email account up so that I can read this to you. Right now, if you live in California, in the uh, what is they call that the golden state or whatever whatever you nickname that you guys have for that state out there you might be in for a little bit of a problem this summer and that is because one of your power plants may in fact be down and it may stay down for quite some time let's take a look at the article let me bring it up on the screen here. I thought that would be a good way to start the show off while I'm waiting for this other information to come up. And right here, 45 days ago, there was a... Uh, there we go. There was a water leak that prompted the San Onfre Nuclear Generating Station to shut down one of its nuclear reactors and I believe that we have some stupendous views of that particular nuclear reactor right here is an image of the nuclear reactor those are of course are the containment buildings the um, uh, tubes there are cooling tubes and the way these cooling tubes work is you have a tube that carries the hot radioactive water and then you have another tube that carries the cold fresh water and what has happened is that um, one of the tubes the one that carries the fresh water goes in through the hot radioactive water flash steams and that's what turns the turbines and generates the power. Now what you've had happen is one of those tubes has become corroded and started leaking. So now what they have to do is they have to start um, repairing these and inspecting them. Plant owner Southern California Edison shut down San Onfre's Unit 3 reactor January 31st after operators detected a leak in one of the two steam generators used to harvest heat from the unit's reactor. In separate announcements this week, the utility, utility said that during heavy testing, a total of seven tubes that carry radioactive water failed under high pressure. It was a leak in one of those tubes that prompted the January shutdown. Edison spokesman spokeswoman Jennifer Manfrey said traces of radioact uh, radiation escaped during the January leak but officials said there was no danger to workers or neighbors and due to the tremendous amount of radiation from the Fukushima disaster you probably wouldn't notice it anyways I added that part Edison technicians are testing a total of 125, 129 steam generator tubes that were found to have an unexpected amount of wear. All the bad tubes will have to be blocked after testing. Now, the problem is, is that this summer, with the high electricity use during the summer for air conditioning and whatnot, they will have 19% less electricity in the state of California, which means rolling blackouts for the folks in California, which is not good. So people need to be prepared for that. Now, the announcement that I wanted to make comes to us from one of our favorite guests, John DiNardo. As you know, John DiNardo does a lot of biblical and Christian work. He is, I would say, one of the leading Christian Planet X researchers that there are today. His uh, shows, when he is on, typically last three hours, a marathon show, and we never get everything in. But he has sent us a note about disasters. There is a website. It is called Quake sensing.org that's quake 
sensing.org and they need our help and I'm going to let me bring quakesensing.org up on the screen here so we can all take a look at it let's see here q u a k e s e n s i n g dot o r g is how you spell it quakesensing.org the website will be coming up here in one moment there we go that is quakesensing.org you can report earthquake warning observations you can uh, report it on the map and if you go down here to the bottom of the screen where we are going you will see that there is a way to help fund the website they need funding right now um, they would appreciate whatever you can send them um, a lot of people send us um, donations occasionally to help keep the show on the air but if you're thinking about doing that I would highly suggest that you send it to these people instead quakesensing.org they need your help they help identify earthquake precursors and seismic hazards and things like that and this is what the um, website looks like so if you go there they are attempting to make as many people as possible aware of potential earthquakes and earthquake signs that they are seeing so at any rate you folks in California might have um, some issues with your electricity this uh, summer as the summertime cooling season comes around and that would not be good for people with health problems and things like that so you might want to think about getting yourself an alternative method of generating electricity and that's something we are actually going to be talking about in a few weeks because we are going to be taking our first very first trip to the shack in the first week of April the first weekend of April and it should be very interesting because even in northern Michigan at the 45th parallel the winter has not been that severe so consequently we are able to get up there extra early this year usually it's the end of April early May before all the snow melts up there but according to the National Weather Service there is no more snow up there so we are going to be making a trip and I of course will have with me our 5 watt Wilson electronics cellular amplifier this amplifies your cell phone signal to 5 watts usually you've got at the most 500 milliwatts coming out of your cell phone this boosts it tremendously because way out there in the middle of the pine forests in northern Michigan well there isn't any cell phone signal because the nearest tower is about 20 miles away but this little gizmo allows us to take our cellular modem connected to the computer and broadcast from in the field you can um, pretty much with this technology do a show on the road anywhere in the world that you can get a cell phone signal it's uh, pretty amazing technology and we are going to be testing it for the first time over the believe it or not Easter weekend because my birthday happens to fall on that weekend this year and I'm going out of town now there is a um, um, an opinion out there in the world right now it is something that I also agreed with completely when I started this show last January we started uh, last January just before before the Japanese earthquake and um, it was uh, when the uh, Arab Spring was going so we started covering that and when the original occupiers were in London having the big riots over the um, over the tuition costs 
we started the show then. And I have always been a little bit reluctant to fully speak my mind. And as we have progressed with the show and really gotten it underway since November 1st when we had Cliff High on as our first guest, we have um, been under attack by various nefarious uh, individuals or and or organizations that have uh, attempted to disrupt our shows. We don't like that. So, since they have uh, laid down the gauntlet while we have been towing the party line and being good, well, there's not much point in being good anymore because they fired the first shot. Should have thought better before you did that. At any rate, somebody else um, came up with this, so I'm uh, basically going to be paraphrasing it. If you uh, listen to that other show that this came from, you will probably recognize most of it. But <clears throat> I have rewritten some small parts of it, and I agree with it, so I am going to reread it on the air right now, and it is a bit of advice for all of you. Because if you remember the old movie Network, and uh, you hear part of that during our opening credits, our uh, credit music there, you will recognize parts of this monologue. I have finally come to the, to the conclusion that progressives are crushing the idea of American exceptionalism. As they march toward my front door, I have to say, as an American citizen, I will not comply. I have finally reached the point where I cannot say that I recognize my own country anymore. We are no longer exceptional. We are exceptional by default because they are doing everything they can to make sure that we are not exceptional anymore. For decades, progressives have been trying to shift from American exceptionalism to globalism and a movement for an open society. And don't think for one minute, one single second, one moment in time, that I believe that this president did this. He did not. He did not do it alone. I've always loved my country, but the progressive movement killed my country, and now they've killed it for me. Just about three times they killed it originally, but I didn't grow up knowing about that country. I didn't grow up knowing about our founding fathers and the black founding fathers. I didn't learn the things that I'm learning right now, so they killed it. It was all there. We were teaching it in schools in 1910 and 1900, and then the progressives came and said, don't teach that stuff, teach about the cherry tree, and teach that they were all slave owners. And that's the stuff that we all learned in school. It's all a lie, every word of it. All of the things that I've learned about our country, all of the love that I have from, for the country, came from Woodrow Wilson and Uncle Sam and Liberty Bonds and all of that garbage that is nothing but red, white, and blue flag waving. But even that was strong enough to bring us a hundred years down the road because it was based on something true that the progressives were trying to erase. They killed the country. They buried it. They've done it for American... They've done it for Amer African Americans like nobody's business. African Americans... Tell us about Booker T. Washington. Tell us about him. What do you know about him? Do you know anything at all about the real Booker T. Washington? Tell me about Frederick Douglass. Tell me about him. Tell me about the African American that was by George Washington's side the whole time. Oh, he was a slave. Did you read his eulogy of George Washington? You should because it's pretty darned amazing. Tell me about that. George Bush starts doing stuff on the border, starts the Patriot Act, and all of this stuff is starting to get out of control. The debt is going sky high. We are arguing with each other about Republicans and Democrats. 
I don't even understand my country anymore. And I had, I so had to make the decision. What is my country? What is it? Who are we? Are we the baby killers? Are we the oppressors? What I have is the fear that are not for our own lives and for our own lives, but the fear that this idea can be vanquished and on top of it, the true deep understanding that this idea that man is created and endowed by that creator with things that you cannot ever take away and those things can't be taken away because they come from the creator and we find them self-evident. No matter how long they would put us in jail, no matter how they would torture us, they would still be self-evident that you are born free and man should be free. Man has a right to his life. He has a right to his liberty. He has a right to pursue the things that will make him happy. You will never vanquish that. Never. And that's what makes us, the United States, unique. We are the ones who put that down in writing. We're the ones who lived up to it for about 50 years. And then Andrew Jackson comes in and takes this idea of be humble, be good to each other, and perverts it. Kill the Indian because we're here for God. It's the same place that Columbus went wrong. Columbus was humble on the way over. He was arrogant on the way back. We're here for God. Kill them. It happens to man over and over and over and over again. We are unique. We are special. We are exceptional. But only when we are humble. Only when we are not trying to teach the world a lesson. Be more like me. Be more like us. Be who you are. Be who you are. But allow me to be who I am as well. I am a man, and anyone who tries to extinguish that, I will not comply. I want you to start saying these words to yourself. I want you to say those words out loud. You need to start hearing yourself say those things. Say it with me right now. I will not comply. And as in the movie network, go to your window, open up your window, and shout, I will not comply. They want to take away my right to have my kids work on my ranch and on my farm. You want to tell my kids they can't drive the tractor? I was driving a tractor when I was 10 years old. I will not comply. Why? So they can go and play soccer and get trophies for losing? I will not comply. Learn to say those words and say them with meaning. I pray and have prayed for quite some time because the Lord has blessed me and has cursed me. If these things, these patterns do not change, I pray that we have the strength to my dying breath to all say together, I will not comply. And, as I just said, the government is trying to prevent kids from working on their own family's farms. And that is tonight's Andrew Breitbart uh, tribute, if you will. I still have to name this particular segment. Right now I'm calling it the Andrew Breitbart segment because we are an army. We are a strong army.
You're listening to the world. Can you dig it? You're listening to the world. Can you dig it? Agenda 21 is the source of this particular new rule. Those of you that are on the video side can now see the article. It comes from Off Grid Survival, a website named Off Grid Survival. It is from Friday, March 16, 2012. Farm work has always played an important role in the lives of rural youth across America. In fact, most rural areas working on a farm is often a kid's first job. From milking cows and feeding livestock to harvesting crops in the summer, children often play a vital role in family farming. But thanks to some overzealous bureaucrats in the Obama administration, kids in rural America may soon be barred from performing traditional farm chores. And some in the farming community warn that these new rules being proposed by various departments in the Obama administration could put family farms in danger of failing. New federal regulations are being proposed that would bar children under the age of 16 from working on farms owned by anyone other than their parents. The new regulations are so stringent it would actually prohibit kids from working on any farm that wasn't 100% owned by their parents. That means it would actually be illegal to help out on their own grandparents' farm even with their parents' consent. The Department of Transportation is actually going right after family farmers. There are new rules which would prohibit children under 16 from operating tractors, four-wheelers, riding mowers, and other machinery, even on family farms. While some lawmakers seem to think these activities sound dangerous, they fail to recognize that farm work for these kids is not just work, it's a way of life. Those of us that have grown up in farming communities and have even grown vegetables in the backyard and helped out mom and dad are affected by these new regulations. The question has been raised in other venues. Well, what are they going to do to enforce it? What are they going to do? Send people to the farms? Well, ladies and gentlemen, I give you that recent story about, hmm, let me see, the government approving, what was it, 600 unmanned drones per state in the United States? Remember that little faux pas where they approved that? And now the police departments, the counties, Federal Government, the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, Coast Guard, Ho Department of Homeland Security, and everybody else can be flying drones above your head to keep an eye on you and what you're doing on your farm. So, your kids, well, they can just sit around and play video games. Apparently, they're not allowed to even harvest the eggs from the chicken coop, or bale some hay, or feed the cows or the pigs. This is um, not a good thing. And it, it is, in fact, part of what is called Agenda 21. Those of you that were around last January when I started the show, and we were broadcasting an awful lot of videos, one of the videos was the truth behind Agenda 21. We've seen this coming since, well way before now. And now it's coming. And of course, nobody bothered to listen because they were all asleep. And now it's coming home to roost. Our next story involves... What does our next story involve? Our next story involves um, a rumor that uh, Cliff High, actually, I believe, mentioned for the first time on this show that looks like it might actually happen, believe it or not. Um, 
supposedly anonymous anonymous big announcement has to do with an imminent televised event um, Cliff High has been mentioning, and I believe he mentioned it first on this show, that we'd all be talking about, quote-unquote, something appearing on TV by the media whores dubbed Truth Attack, and this could be it. Plus, if you recall, this past week, we had that... Um, magnetic filament coming off the sun with that sphere object that was by the sun. Um, Cliff High also said that there would be something very weird happening with the sun and that was probably it because nobody's ever seen that before. And it took NASA completely by surprise because it appeared on multiple satellites on multiple images all at the same time. So there was no way for them to hide it. So the truth is coming out slowly but surely. In all your life, you have waited for the good news, and that day has finally come. Very soon you will witness large-scale mass arrests all over the world of many men and women who you have come to know as the world's political and financial leaders you've been paying attention to the alternative news stream, you know that many, many bankers have been resigning over the past year or so. This could be the reason for that. Why only some of them and not all of them? Are we talking about sacrificial lambs? Are we talking about people that will be arrested and whisked to the underground bunkers under the Denver airport? Interesting concept to consider. These arrests will reach high into the U.S. government and include many members of the financial and banking worlds. Many of these names you will immediately recognize, though some of you may not immediately recognize, but all have been actively taking part in serious crimes against the people leaving our nations bankrupt while they looted our hard-earned money. I also read uh, something today about, um, what was it? I don't even remember where I read it. I read a uh, news article today about um, a lot of the money that's been disappearing, trillions of dollars, as a matter of fact. Somebody has traced to um, a uh, Satanist, or a uh, cabal of, um, um, I guess you'd call them Satanists, um, Satan worship, not Christians. How does that sound? These arrests should come as no surprise to many of us, as we all know deep down that there is something very wrong with this world, a place where so many go to bed hungry at night, while a few others possess not millions or billions, but trillions of dollars pilfered from the labors of the people. There has always been enough wealth on this planet to go around, and yet those few men and women have been dividing up for themselves virtually all of the wealth in our world, leaving only crumbs for the rest of us to compete over. Upon these arrests, this will now change. Now, this is a double-edged sword, and I'll tell you why. And um, I'll see if I can um, put it in the words that make sense. The way this country was founded is um, by freedom. You have the freedom to pursue your happiness. I have the same. You have liberty. I have liberty. What happens is that people with very poor judgment, if you will, or people that are, in fact, evil, or people that um, just simply don't care, or people like um, some of the people that are currently in charge that aspire to the Cloward and Piven model want to collapse the system. And the best way to collapse this particular system is to take all of the money out of it. That said, the system that we have is not inherently evil or bad. 
it is the people that are manipulating it that are bad. You get it? It's not the air that's bad, it's the poison in the air that's bad. And these people have been poisoning the system. They have been doing it for generations. It is a very, very slippery slope that you can go down, a French Revolution type of slope that you can go down if we're not paying attention to what's going on. We can't let ourselves get overexcited. We can't let ourselves get over exuberant because we will very rapidly, and I believe that we are almost at this point now, what is called the Bonhoeffer moment. And Bonhoeffer was the fellow in Nazi Germany that uh, penned the great quote, um, when they came for me, there was no one left to stand up for me. And that quote is actually a lot longer. And it looks like they are beginning a new regimen of that, um, that particular uh, train of thought, and it's not good. And that's where I will not comply comes from. I'm not going to do it. You're not taking my neighbors away. You're not taking my enemies away. You're not pay taking people that I don't like away. We all have to stand together, and we all have to um, stand united. Because remember, united we stand, and divided we fall. And so, that ends pretty much my test show for tonight, because what I've done is I have... Let me see if I can bring it up here on one of the screens so that you can see it. I am actually... Let me bring up camera number two. There's camera number two. This is our mobile camera. This is the one that we are going to be using at the shack at the 45th parallel to broadcast the show. What we have here is a old Windows laptop. It's actually a pretty good laptop. It's a 2.2 um, gig uh, processor. And it has uh, two gigs of RAM in it, so it's a pretty good, uh, pretty good machine, especially for um, Windows XP. But we are currently running on this Linux, and you can see right there. There's the uh, VU meter that uh, one of the um, programs comes with. You can see the moving back and forth of my voice. The um, audio for the show is actually coming through this Linux box tonight. This is uh, all brand new used to come through the um, Windows 7 box, but actually, over here at the uh, soundboard, we have both the Windows 7 and the Linux box, as well as all of our other inputs coming in all at the same time. So I can come up here and um, click on um, something up here, like um, this. You unlock this door with a key. And I can be talking through this machine over here, so the mixing of the audio is much more effective, as you can hear. Shadow and substance of things and ideas. You just crossed over into Surrounded by idiots, that's what you've just crossed over to. So there we go. That is our um, new audio setup here. And uh, we are essentially testing it tonight. So I thought I'd go ahead and uh, do a little uh, discourse on uh, society and things that we see coming. Um, there are so, so many things that are happening right now. You just can't, you just don't have the time to get into everything. Um, this week, we have, through the Linux box, now have the ability to once again make phone calls that are safe. So we are going to have, this week, a chronic pain specialist come on the show. I, myself, am very interested in having this doctor come on because I am, in fact, a chronic pain sufferer. At one time, I was a semi-professional athlete, and I have a torn meniscus in one of my knees. I am missing... Um, three discs in my back, another three discs in my neck. I have nerve damage. I can't feel my right leg. 
part of my right hand. I can't fail. I have arthritis in most of my major joints as well as a retinue of other problems that you have when you are far, far too athletic for your own good. So he is going to come on and he is going to talk to us about some natural ways to relieve chronic pain. His name is uh, Dr. David Toogood and he is going to be coming to us from California. And that is going to be Tuesday night at 7 p.m. So that should be a um, a pretty good show. I am looking forward to actually talking to the good doctor. And then after that, we are going to be having an entire slew of guests coming on, the likes of which you will be stunned by, including a book author who has come out with a brand new JFK assassination theory. We are also going to have a minister, another minister coming on, who is going to talk to us about um, uh, curse by heritage. In other words, curse by your genetic line. And that should be also very interesting, along with a bunch of other guests. So, for tonight, and I believe this uh, sound system is working good because I am not uh, hearing any complaints from anybody on the staff or anything, so... Until we come back on the air, thank you for uh, stopping by and watching us. My name is Bill Zam, and this is Surrounded by Idiots. And we'll see you on our next show. You unlock this door with the key of imagination. Beyond it is another dimension. A dimension of sound and a dimension of sight.